March 15th started out like, I guess, any other day that I've ever uh, showed up to work for. It's kind of slow in the mornings, which is not uncommon. Uh, show up to work about 10 o'clock in the morning, go through roll call, and then get loaded up in a car and it's off to start answering calls. That morning was, it was exceptionally slow. I don't think I answered a call all morning. Went uh, over to one of our, our favorite little places to eat for breakfast in the morning with my old partner who had been uh, selected to go to our canine division and had breakfast with him. Uh, I remember as I was leaving there, I made the, I made the comment, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to head over to my beat and, and, and take some calls. It's pretty slow this morning, so it'd probably be fairly quiet most of the day. And uh, anybody who works in law enforcement know that's a, that's a no-no. David, 425. You got units that can assist U.S. Marshals following an ag robbery suspect. Silver Ford. Ford Escape. Escape. For any units in that area to... 245 IMD, give us that call. It's supposed to be armed and dangerous, just FYI. <laughs> Get a couple more with you and do a felony takedown. They've made uh, threats to law enforcement. 245, I'm behind that uh, robbery suspect. West 542, you can send me to one of those units if they need help. 104, I'm eastbound at Hewlin. I need another unit with me. 245 closing channel. They're pulling into uh, the Miko Cena Park line. I'm just going to go ahead and light them up. 104 West is closed. Tom is closed. Bill, step it up. I'm code. 233, we'll step it up. Uh, we're rolling through the back of the parking lot. We're behind Central Market right now. Hold on. All right. They're going to fail to yell. They're going to take off on me. Stay on the service truck, guys. Well, hold on. They got caught by gate. Two forty five, we're in pursuit. We're going to Hewlin. Hewlin Southbound, Southbound Hewlin. A little after two o'clock, I heard a, a pursuit kick off uh, kind of north of us. We weren't super close to it, but we weren't completely out of range of it either. And it seemed to be moving west towards my beat. So at that point we kind of dropped what we were doing and I shot down the freeway and was going to try and get ahead of the pursuit to try and help it with stop sticks or whatever I could do to help since it was coming into my beat I needed to be there. A lot of traffic at Horn, a lot of traffic at Horn, I can see it. I see it. Yeah, I think it's the one 
one-way road. I'm about to pull off. He's northbound on the service road, wrong way. He's going to be southbound on the service road. He is northbound. 10-4, I got him. I got He's him. northbound, wrong lane. Driver exits and starts running through an extremely thick wooded area. It was it was it was very thick. I've never I don't know that I've ever run through brush that thick before. But wherever he went, I followed. All of a sudden, we got to a barbed wire fence, and he kind of put his belly on the barbed wire fence and kind of flipped his body over and uh, started to you know scurry up the up the hill. Well. I can't do that because I have all this gear around my waist that if I tried to do that, I'd end up hanging upside down on that barbed wire fence. So I kind of stood there for a second just analyzing this fence. It's a barbed wire fence. It's not like your standard three wire fence where you can spread the wires and crawl through it. This is a five wire fence so, and it's stretched pretty tight. So I found the closest fence post, the closest sturdy fence post, and I started climbing the fence and got, got my first leg over and, uh, Went to get my second leg over and all of a sudden I lost my balance and just fell off the top of the fence. And no sooner did I look up, so I'm, I'm leaning back on my left hand. I've got my, my right leg out straight and I'm on my right knee. I'm about to stand up and that's when I looked up the hill. And as I looked up the hill, here he comes down the hill right back at me at about seven yards. And he raises that gun and I just remember him start shooting. And I, I remember hearing the pals going off in my head. And all of a sudden, I felt excruciating pain in my right leg, just excruciating pain. I didn't know what happened. Um, I didn't know. I, I wasn't sure if I was shot. I didn't know if I stepped in a hole and broke my lower leg. All I knew is that my leg was busted and I couldn't move, and it was excruciating pain, uh, pain like I've never felt before. But he's still shooting me. So I had enough sense to fight through the pain pull my gun out and just point it in his direction. I couldn't even get on my sights because I was in so much pain and just start shooting at him because we're so close. I figure I'm bound to hit him at least once or twice. So start shooting him. And the only thing that's going through my mind is, is just stop shooting me, stop shooting me. And uh, I got off about 10 rounds and this, the shooting stopped. So I didn't really know what happened. Mind you, we're in grass that's probably four to five feet tall. Um, so he fell down in the grass and I immediately looked down and a number of thoughts ran through my head. How am I going to change my magazine out? How am I going to get out of here? How am I, you know, what am I going to do? So I reached up with my hand to grab my radio, clicking my radio, clicking my radio, nothing, no, you know, just getting the, the busy signal. Well, all of a sudden he pops back up and I see him pop back up and he shoots me and it literally, like a movie scene, blows me backwards. Now I'm laying on my face in a mesquite bush, um, and I I'm just thinking, oh man, now I'm now, now I know I'm hurt, but I can't get up. I said, okay, I got to play dead. I couldn't breathe hardly. I, I couldn't talk. Um, I I knew I was hurt now, but and I could just see blood pouring out of my face onto the ground, out of my peripheral vision. 
So now I'm thinking, oh, great. What am I going to do? I got to go. I, I can't die. I can't die. I've got kids to go home to. Um, I've got a family that now is not the time to die. So you're going to have to fight. So I told myself, I refuse to die. I will not die today. And about that time, I heard someone say, And in my mind, I'm scared to death because I think that that is the guy that just shot me talking to the other guy that was in the car. And they're contemplating how they're going to hurt somebody else. Two forty five, single thirty seven. One suspect is down. We don't know where the other one's at. As uh, as the pursuit ended at this ha as a farmhouse, and Matt went to the left, I went to the right. Uh, multiple officers were behind us. Uh, he started calling out foot chase, and as we ran into the woods. All of a sudden, I don't know where, I mean, shots rang out everywhere. It was, my guess was 20 to 30 shots. 245, shots fired, shots fired. More shots fired. Multiple shots fired, multiple shots fired. 245, more shots fired. Go ahead, roll it, roll it, mister. Head fire right now. Have on standby. So we went through the barbed wire fence, ran toward the gunshots. I saw a suspect was deceased on the ground, and then I noticed something in the in the tree line moving. I'm down. Blue. 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 I'm blue. At that point is I could hear blue, blue, blue. I'm blue. And then at that point I knew what that meant. That mean that that's an officer down. And when I realized that, and I was pointing my gun at him, I almost dropped my pistol. Literally, it almost fell out of my hand. 245! 245, we got an officer down. Officer's been shot. Got it, got it, got it. Corey, Corey, Corey. Help him, help him, help him. Uh, I need some help. I need some help. Get him here now. I need some help. I went up to the officer that was down and I realized it was Matt. I'm like, oh my God, Matt, are you shot? It's fierce. Uh, it's fierce. what we know. We've got an officer shot. we got an officer down. I need help. I need help. Okay, somebody get back here with a tight neck crew now. Hurry. I need help, guys. I know, man. I know. Oh, no. And, uh, all I had was my pocket knife. I didn't have an attack med kit. I didn't have any, uh, medical supplies with me. All I could do was, from what I remember from the academy, some magic first aid that I took my knife and uh, cut his vest off, cut his shirt off, cut his right leg. He told me he was shot in his leg. At that time, I didn't know he was shot that many times. I remember seeing his face. I thought maybe a thorn got him, but later that was a gunshot to his face. And I'm holding my hand on some wounds, trying to stop the blood and trying to uh, put a tourniquet on him the best I could. 
and having my pistol in the other hand because I didn't know where the other suspect was. Hey, how you guys? Matt, I'm with you, I'm with you. Where are you hitting at? Everywhere. Huh? Everywhere. The first thing I noticed was a like little prayer, I guess, that one of the other police wives had put on the police wives page. It was just for our police officers, specifically for Fort Worth officers. And I thought, just with everything going on, you know, in the nation right now that, you know, she was just praying protection over them. And I thought, I was, I was like, that's so sweet of her, not thinking anything was going on. So then a, a couple minutes later, I got a, a private message in my Facebook from a friend who used to date an officer here who was um, friends with a lot of us. She just messaged us and said, hey, I heard what was going on. Is everybody, is everything okay? I thought, oh my gosh, something's happening, you know? And so I immediately turned on the TV and the news popped up, breaking news. There's Fort Worth officer shot, um, life-threatening injuries. And I thought, oh my God, you know, something is happening. And my first thought was not, oh my gosh, it could be Matt. Not even a thought at that point. I don't know if that was just like denial and trying to like protect myself from that. But, um, you know, the odds are it wouldn't be Matt, you know, there's however many officers on duty at any given time. Um, so they start to describe what happened, that it was a vehicle pursuit. And, um, I think it, it was kind of at that point I thought, Oh my gosh, well, Matt was stopping cars what if one of them ran and, and what if this is Matt? And when they gave the location of it off the West Loop, I was like, okay, that narrows it down quite a bit. I know that's Matt's area. I'm, I'm going to call him and make sure everything's okay. So I called him and he, of course, didn't answer his phone. And I'm trying to calm myself down. I'm like, okay, well, they're really busy right now. Like there's a lot going on. He, He'll call me back. I'm just going to wait a minute and he'll call me back. And I waited and waited. He didn't call me back. I called him again. He didn't answer. And I waited. I called him a third time and he didn't answer. And so at that point, I was just shaking. And the reality of it possibly being Matt became very real. And uh, I was almost like in this inner conflict with myself, like, um, it's him, like, it's like my heart knew it was him. But then the human, you know, part of me was like, stop worrying. You're always worrying about something. It's probably not him. It's like almost in this argument with myself. You don't know anything yet. And so I uh, got back on Facebook and was looking through the thread. And uh, one of Matt's friends that he rode with on his old shift on West Side had gotten on there and said, you know, no, everything's not okay, but I can't say anything else. And so I messaged him and I said, Cody, I'm about to throw up. Matt won't answer his phone. And he messaged me back and said, call me. And that was when I knew that it was Matt. Hey, I'm hit everywhere. Matt, where are you? I'm right here. Where you hit? Okay, legs, arm. Okay, okay. Legs. Okay. I believe the other <coughs> I was kind of trying to keep myself calm because uh, I I knew that if I didn't, it was gonna I was gonna go downhill a lot faster just because of my you know my prior experience and in, in being in the EMS field. Um. So they they end up trying to treat me, but I'm still in this bush, and I tell them. You're going to have to get me out of this bush. So they dragged me out of the bush and uh, they start trying to cut my shirt off with a pocket knife and it's just not going very well. And I'm getting frustrated because I, I feel like the longer I sit there, the more and more I can't breathe. So I end up pushing myself up to a seated position and I start taking off my own, my own gear because I, I feel like it's just crushing my chest and I can't breathe. Well, all of a sudden... <laughs> Uh, 
Well, all of a sudden, uh, you know, Brandy, <laughs> my friend Brandy shows up, and it's like, it's like once she shows up, I know that <laughs> my mind's kind of at ease. Everything's okay. Everything's going to be all right. On March 15th, I wasn't in patrol. I was working on loan at the academy, so not in a uniform capacity. And that day I had my radio and my medical kit on my desk. Um, I had been a tactical medic prior to being put on loan at the academy. And I heard the pursuit was ongoing on West, so I turned on my radio and I heard that it was Matt. He's a friend of mine. And when we heard someone on the radio say, officer down, I grabbed my medical kit that was on my desk and I ran out of the academy and down the building and jumped in with a SWAT officer that was on his way to the scene. So I ran up the fence line to uh, where Matt was and he, there were a bunch of officers around him and they were doing their best to help him. And w when they saw me coming, I, I, I guess they know me and know my background and they were yelling, tac meds here, tac meds here. And this, the sea of officers that surrounded him kind of parted. And when I saw him, they had already cut his right pant leg up. He had two wounds on his right femur, uh, entry wounds and no exit wounds. And uh, there was already a tourniquet sort of in place, uh, but not tightened. So I said, hey guys, cut that other pant leg up and uh, let's compare. Let's make sure that these bullets didn't travel into the other leg. And we wanna compare how big his right leg was, the one that was shot to the other leg and make sure that there's not internal bleeding going on. Well, as they're doing that, I'm cutting off the rest of Matt's shirt and his top. And uh, I, I, I saw a bullet hole. I didn't know it was a bullet hole at the time. I, I thought that he had fallen or had gotten scratched by some brush. I didn't really know what this was on his right side of his face. But I knew that it, there was some sort of injury to his face because there was blood. So, and he was telling me, I'm, I can feel it in my lungs. I can feel, I cannot breathe. Something's not right. Um, I need to be on my side. And I'm like, Matt, you're already on your side. You're on your side. So we start looking and he's got one hole in his face right here. He's got two holes on his arm that went through and through. So there's four holes total in his upper arm, two holes under underneath his arm in his armpit. And then an exit wound out his back. There was another hole in his back. So as I'm looking at Matt and as I'm going head to toe, I'm looking at him and I'm like, let's make sure we have a good airway. And he was talking to me and his breathing was so labored. So I knew that we had something going on in his chest. And then I knew the big ones were the two that were underneath his arm. Those, those were the ones that were the most concerning to me because of the path that I was thinking of. I was thinking, man, these bullets must have went through and through and then come underneath his arm and traveled across his chest, which was partially true. Um, but just to see my friend, oh man, to see my friend laying there and uh, telling me, I mean, he knows me and I know him and he's telling me I am really hurt. I am, something's not right. I can't breathe. Uh, my, my chest is filling up. That's what he's telling me. And I'm thinking 10 steps ahead. I'm thinking, man, any second he's going to lose consciousness. And these are the next things that I need to do. So I'm trying to keep it together. And I just keep telling him, I got you. I got you. We know what we need to do. We're going to do the things that we need to do. And we'll get you to JPS and they can fix anything as long as you, as long as you can make it there and you can fight till the time you get there, they will save you. And that's exactly what happened. Well, I always remember the day that Matt came in. Uh, page went out that there was a police officer had been shot and of course whenever you hear that you run to the OR or the ER as quickly as possible. Uh, by the time I'd arrived there was already a large crowd of people there so you knew it was uh, something pretty important and serious. The first thing I noticed is all the gunshot wounds that he had. I mean he just had multiple gunshot wounds. He was relatively stable in the emergency room so that's why we went to the CT scanner to help try to determine where, where were all these bullets. 
uh, in the scanner saw that there was one in his chest and one in his liver and with that uh, we rushed to the OR. By the time we got to the OR he was becoming unstable. We initially operated on his abdomen but it was, uh, uh, there was concern that something was going on in his chest and so we had to operate on his chest as well. We got things stabilized but the main concern was the injury to to the aorta. It did graze the aorta and that was the big question of what to do with that. Along the way we were, um, he was in the ICU for quite a while. Um, uh, anyone that's got polytrauma like that uh, you hope for a smooth ride but there were a few bumps in the road but he eventually stabilized. Himself. He threw himself over this fence right here. Right here, because I used that post right there to, to come over the fence. And this is the bush I was laid up in right here. And I thought he'd run up the hill. Um, once he went over, I, I lost sight of him. And I figured he just scampered up the hill and he was off to the races. So that's kind of why I take my time. I come over the fence. And literally, as I hit the ground, he pops up out of the bushes, and we just start exchanging gunfire. Well, it's been almost exactly a year, and uh, I'm still recovering. Um, a little bit slower than I anticipated it would be. But uh, hopefully later this year, I'll get back to uniform and get back into uh, doing the job I love.